Hello. Before I get into this list, I need to specify that this isn't necessarily what I think are the best mice of 2021, and rather it's a roundup of what I've found this past year that works out the best for me personally. So that means that every mouse on this list, A, allows me to perform well. My number one priority is always how well I can aim on a mouse, and if I'm not able to perform at my best, it's a non-starter. And B, every mouse on this list also must give me the consistency for long-term use and reliability. And this is why I consider everything I'm talking about today to be mainable mice. All of these could be my number one go-to if I didn't have any other options, and I would still be pretty satisfied with it, because I have confidence in my ability to consistently perform with them. So the criteria I've placed upon it makes me feel pretty good about this list. I could certainly play around with some of the individual placements a little bit, but I'm very confident in saying that every mouse on this list is a cut above the rest for me, and this does represent my current main rotation. New releases in 2022 could definitely shake this list up, and there are a lot of mice I am very excited for. Yeah, but for now, these are the standouts and what I enjoy using. Alright, let's get into it. To start it off, we have the Endgame Gear XM1R coming in at number 6. Technically, this was released in, I believe, mid-December last year, but the silt definitely counts to me. And US availability was so weird for a while that it did take me a while to get this mouse in hand. But once I finally was able to get my mouse, I was not disappointed. Everything about this mouse feels near flawless. Its build quality is absolutely incredible, it feels like a tank. It's easily one of the most premium feeling mice in hand. The clicks as well are also exemplary. Personally, I do think that they are a little bit stiff and almost too tactile, but I know that they are a lot of people's favorites and I can see why you like them. They are very premium feeling and very well-tuned clicks. In the stock cable, also once again, a cut above the rest. It is the perfect stock cable for me personally, and it is the one that I enjoy using the most. I have absolutely no issues and no desires for this mouse to go wireless. I think that the stock cord is perfect. And all of these features are also packed into a shape that I thoroughly enjoy. Most naturally, I use what's called a pincher style claw grip, where I squeeze the back of the hump with these outer edges of my palm. And you'll notice here that the XM1 has a very wide hump flare that allows me to pretty easily squeeze the hump and mount my hand to get a very solid grip. Then at the back of the hump here, you can also see that it is diamond shaped instead of being well rounded and smooth. This helps the mouse to tuck into the back of my hand and create a lot of deep palm contact. This gives tons of stability and gives the mouse a very locked in, a very secure feeling that feels great in game. Then in addition, the front of the mouse is very low in comparison to the hump. It, this gives it a very precise feel for these inner hand finger motions while aiming. Then when you combine this precise feel with all the stability you get from this very large hump, you get a mouse that I could aim very well with and get a large amount of consistency from. It, this has been a chopper performing mouse for me for a very long time, and I've put a lot of hours in on it the past year. I am very confident with the shape. However, this hump is so wide that I do feel that it's a little bit restrictive, much more so than I would like in a mouse. These very wide flares on the edge of the hump end up hitting my hand during vertical motions, which makes it feel like I'm fighting it against the shape a lot more than I would like. This is why the mouse is placed a little bit lower on this list. I very highly value a high range of motion that gives me a free feeling on these inner hand motions, and the XM1 forces me into a different style that I'm not as comfortable with using. This is why I'm very excited for Endgame Gear's upcoming smaller mouse. If they can release something that has a little bit of a thinner back, and also probably a little bit shorter in the length as well, it could feel so much less restrictive and allow me to use my more normal aiming style. I know that there are other people who do feel that the XM1 is a little bit too large, so I do feel that if they could bring the same level of quality and attention to detail, but all in a smaller package, it does seem like that would be a mouse that would be extremely hard to beat. And it sounds like a good place very high on my personal list. Alright, now coming at number 5, we have my favorite mouse from my favorite company. A mouse with easily one of the best design shapes in my opinion. The Paxi Zegan NP01S. It, this mouse is a super unique asymmetrical design that works out very well for a claw grip, especially in my normal pincher style. Much like the XM1, it also has this very prominent hump flare that does allow me to pinch it and get a lot of support, but very importantly, it is much thinner and lower, which does help it to feel far less restrictive, and I still have a full range of motion with this mouse. It then the very smooth and curvy design of the asymmetrical hump also allows it to make a lot of contact into your palm, but without actually jutting into this middle portion like the XM1 does. It, this allows it to feel much more balanced between support and mobility, and I do feel that it performs a little bit higher than the XM1 because of this. Also with the XM1, it has a pretty low button height in the front. It, this gives that very same precise feel to all of your mouse control. It, but in addition, the grip width is also very thin. It, this further amplifies the precise feel and allows this mouse to feel like you're using a tool to aim. It, this tool-like feeling is excellent and I feel that it really amplifies my performance and allows me to aim at my absolute best. It, this is pretty easily one of the shapes I have the best raw control over. However, this very thin grip width at the front does make me feel a little bit of discomfort. It doesn't actually hurt my hand, so it is pretty manageable but it does force such an aggressive curl of my fingers and a pretty firm grip where I kind of have the death grip the sides that it does make it a little bit uncomfortable. So it does lack the effortless feel that I also look for in a mouse. It, once again, this is something that I very highly value, so having to fidget with my grip because of this discomfort is definitely a big notch on the shape and why I ultimately pushed it down the list despite how well I perform with it. But still, I aim so well that it does make up for it and I keep consistently coming back to this mouse. But the rest of its general features are also top notch. Its build quality is absolutely perfect, and Vaxi mice in general are the most premium feeling options in my opinion. Then the clicks are sublime. They're easily my favorite clicks on any mouse. They're light, smooth, with a very crisp feeling of tactility, and they also have this perfect amount of bounciness that comes from their well-tensioned post travel. 
They feel so responsive, so tight, and just so good in game that I genuinely feel that they improve my play. They are crazy good, and I cannot overstate that enough. The Axie is literally designed to the perfect clicks. It is so impressive. The only thing that I can actually ding about the shape is that the cable isn't very good. I do think that it is usable, but it is fairly stiff, which means that you can feel it if you don't have proper cable management. I would love to see an update where they add a little bit more flexibility in this cable and make it more on par with something like Vaxi C-Series. Because if they are able to do that, this would be the perfect stock mouse, and Vax's entire lineup would become so much more attractive. Now, coming at number 4, we have the Zowie S2C. This is much lower than I thought this mouse would place earlier on in the year. I did main this mouse for a few months, and I really enjoyed my extensive use with it. However, there has been a couple of new releases recently that have changed my perspective, and have caused this mouse to fall out of favor for me a little bit. I still do enjoy it a lot though, don't get me wrong. And that is largely because I consider the shape to be flawless. It has a hump that is very similar to the NP01S, so I do get that same feeling of a balance of both support and mobility. But unlike the NP01S, the front is much taller and also wider at the grip. Therefore, it is much more comfortable to use, and I have no issues with discomfort at all. It, this taller and wider front does make it lose some of that precise feel that I've been talking about, but I do feel that this extra comfort adds a lot of consistency to my play. It, this is what allowed the mouse to feel very reliable for me during that long period of time that I used it. This high degree of consistency is exactly what I'd look for, and this mouse never let me down. I never once questioned my mouse choice while manning the S2C. It just had everything I was looking for and everything that I wanted. And like I said before, the only reason I ever end up moving off of the shape is that other stuff just impressed me more. I still do really enjoy the S2C and I am still using it, but it just doesn't quite hit the same anymore after I've experienced a couple of different shapes. And now the rest of the mouse is very high quality as well. The build quality is absolutely perfect and the mouse feels very premium. You'll probably start to notice the theme here because this very premium tank-like hand feel is something that is very important to me and one aspect that I will always look for in a mouse. Then, in addition to the classic Zalia build quality, their C-Series updates are also greatly appreciated. The new lower weight feels great and is an excellent breath of fresh air coming from the classic S2. And the new more matte coating is also extremely grippy, one of my favorites, easily. And the cable is also perfect as well. With good management, I never noticed it in-game, and I don't think we'd ever need to replace it. So overall, this is a banger of a mouse in every regard, and is still pretty easily one of my favorite options. However, it is still not the highest, because the top three on this list really brings in some heat. Now, moving on to the modern classic. The Logitech G Pro X Superlight. Once again, not technically released in 2021, but late December, basically the same thing, and really, I just didn't want to talk about this mouse. Also, its release very early last year is what allowed me to put a ton of time on it. I'm pretty sure that this is the mouse that I used the most last year. It did go in and out of periods of being my main, but no matter what, it never left my desk, and I can't say that about any other mouse. It has always been part of my main rotation since the day I got it, and has seen consistent use for a full year. It, this has allowed me to get very comfortable with this mouse, and also get a good gauge on how well it performs for me, personally. It, this type of familiarity and comfort with the mouse is what really raised the stock on this list, and has allowed it to stand the test of time even after I've made other mice. So, unlike the other shape-focused options on every other spot on this list, the signature Logitech features are what set this one apart in particular. Of course, the shape isn't actually bad, I just personally feel that it's so safe and so neutral that it holds it back a little bit. It has these almost completely flat sides, it this like somewhat awkwardly placed highest point right in the middle here, and then these very smooth curves out in the back. Overall, it's just so blah. It doesn't do a single thing poorly, but it doesn't really excel in any regard. I do feel that it can always get a very good grip on this mouse, because the shape is so safe it is very versatile, but it does take a little bit to remember how I normally grip it, because there isn't really any guide on where to place your fingers, and you just kind of have to figure it out yourself. Yeah, but after I do fidget around a little bit, I am eventually able to get something that feels very good. And once you do find out your specific grip style with the shape, the 60 gram weight plus flawless wireless feels incredible. You get such a uniquely great experience of freedom while using this mouse. It is so effortless and unrestricted because there's nothing standing in your way. It, there's no cable, no unnecessary mass. It is just your arm moving around your desk and aiming in game. It, this takes the effortless feeling that I was talking about with other mice to the next level. And I feel that while I'm using the GPX, I can completely focus on the game I'm playing and my aim is complete second nature, which is always conducive to more practical in-game performance. So while the shape doesn't really facilitate great mouse control on its own, the full package, when you consider everything that the mouse offers, really allows for excellent in-game performance. And it is impossible for me to ignore how good this mouse is. It absolutely deserved to place this high on the list for me personally, and just based on how consistently I've used it alone. It's just so good. A true old reliable. And since I also got the new lethal glass gates in, I'm probably going to end up putting a lot more time in on this mouse in the future. After having used these for a bit yesterday, I can say that the first impressions are actually pretty great. They have zero static friction. Like, literally zero. And moving your mouse from a standstill is completely effortless, even on something like the Vaxi PA, it that normally has a little bit of static friction that gives you some stability at the end of movements. But with glass gates, your mouse moves with even the tiniest amount of force. It is true effortless movement. The difference between PTFE options like core pads and even Tiger Rice is actually pretty astounding for these static movements. There is a crazy difference in static friction, and this is pretty easy the least I've ever felt. 
but in addition, they also retain a pretty good amount of dynamic friction. If reference core pads actually feel a little bit faster on these large movements. This does definitely check out because on paper, PTFE should have lower friction than glass. So this definitely does make sense, and I think it is by design. It, this allows glass case to actually keep a pretty good amount of stopping power. It definitely doesn't feel like your mouse slides around uncontrollably, and it comes to a very clean, very decisive stop. This is what has allowed them to feel so high performance so far. I still definitely have to put more time on them and test a lot of different pad combinations, but I am certainly looking forward to this process and first impressions are great so far. There will be a full review on these skates in particular in about a weekish. All right, now coming in at number two, we have the Zowie ZA13C. Here is where the list starts to get really interesting because this is an absolute banger of a mouse. There's been a lot of positive reviews on this lately and it is not hype, trust me. The shape is truly god tier for Kalaw. And I think that it should be the number one go-to mouse for this grip style. It just like all these other mice, you see that same prominent hump flare in the back. Hey, but what sets the Z13 apart is that its hump is very tall, and also pretty well-rounded from the top here. It this allows you to hit deep into your hand and make natural contact right in this middle region of your palm. I feel like I have a ton of stability and a very locked-in grip due to how deep this hump hits. Hey, but unlike something like the XM1 that ends up restricting my range of motion because of how deep it hits in my palm, with the back hump of the Z13 slopes off so quickly it feels cut off and doesn't impact this bottom portion of your hand and restricting my movement. So I both have the phenomenal stability from a very large hump and the excellent range of motion that I highly value out of a smaller humped mouse. It then also has a very low front and thin grip width of the NP01S. It that helps give it the very precise, tool-esque feel of your mouse control. But unlike that shape, I don't have to death grip the Z13C, so it is still super comfortable. My grip is so effortless and relaxed despite how activated I am due to its very aggressive design. So all in all, the shape actually has everything that I could possibly want in a mouse shape. It does feel like there is a gap between this mouse and everything else on the list. Its shape is just such a complete package, it blows me away. And other less aggressively designed claw grip shapes like the S2C just don't hit the same anymore. And just like the rest of Zowie's lineup, the full package is also excellent. I actually did have a slight build quality issue on my unit, where I do notice a little bit of side flex on this left side thumb portion here, but I was able to tighten the screw back here and fix a little bit of this flexing. And now I don't actually notice it on my normal grip. Because like I said earlier, I don't squeeze this mouth hard at all, and I do need to put a pretty good amount of force in order to feel this flex. So during normal use and in-game, I never notice it. And as far as I can tell, the quality is flawless. Then finally, it also has the same C-Series updates I talked about on the S2C that really bring it to that next level. So all in all, this is just such a good mess. It is actually the claw grip shape perfected, and I think it's one of the best designed mice ever made. But still, despite it attaining the status of the quintessential claw grip shape, there is still one option that comes in above it for me personally. And that mouse is the G303 Shroud Edition, coming in at the well-deserved number one spot. I was actually considering putting the Z13C at number one while I was reviewing it, but once I went back to the G33 after that process, I was instantly reminded of how perfect this mouse is for me. It is not nearly as universal or even quite as good on paper as the Z13C's shape, but it is exactly made for my most natural grip style perfectly, which just takes it to that next level. The back of the mouse is sharply curved, which perfectly matches the angle I make with my hand when I pinch the back of the hump normally. The super unique design is also what allows it to create a ton of stability with a perfect range of motion. I feel just as locked in as a very large humped mouse, and have the same range of motion and freedom as a much smaller option. It is a crazy combination of qualities. Then these very sharply angled, diamond shaped sides also allow me to get a very strong grip. I feel that I have excellent fine control from my fingers due to how locked in they feel. And I am able to use all the muscles in my fingers to the highest degree to aim in game. And finally, to chop it off, it is extremely comfortable. The shape being exactly made for my most natural grip style allows it to just disappear into my hand. The moment I'm able to find purchase on the shape, it just works, and I never have to think about it. It is completely effortless to aim. And even the rest of the mouse's quality is perfect. It is built like an absolute tank and feels incredibly premium, even based on Logitech standards. It also has my favorite coating. This frostic plastic on the side feels amazing and is super grippy without feeling sticky. And then the scroll as well is nice and tactile, which I enjoy. It does actually cause a weird vibration issue, but I have been able to get used to it and I don't notice it at all anymore. Then finally, the clicks are super crisp. Once again, took some getting used to, but now they feel great. They're super tight, super responsive. If the only actual fault that I could possibly find with this mouse, and the only thing I've ever had issue with, is that it could be a little bit lighter. I would love for it to be 60 grams or less like the G Pro X Super Lite. Yeah, but even then, this mouse is still just about the same weight as everything else on this list, so I don't actually have any problem with it. It just could be better and reach that next level. I am praying for a Super Lite version, because that could be literally perfect for me. Please, Logitech, I am begging you. So I do want to say that this is my endgame mouse because of how flawless the shape is for me, but I actually didn't even think that this would be a good mouse for me before I got it. So there could be another unique design that I don't expect that could potentially be better than this. Because if I didn't realize that my perfect shape was just sitting under my nose completely undetected, then I probably don't really know what I'm talking about for my own personal preferences. And there also could be a mouse with better features that eventually usurps it. 
If, for example, I like the combination of lightweight plus wireless on the GPX. So if there is a mouse that offers those same features, but in a better shape, it could end up replacing this. But still, no matter what, I'm pretty sure I'm going to like this mouse for a long time. I am just of the never say never mentality, and I'm always down to try new options and would gladly accept a new main. But for now, this is my perfect mouse, and I have never enjoyed using anything else more.